When a legend like Ray Dalio has something to say, you better be attentive. I guess you already realized that something fishy is going on in the global economy and experts like Mr. Dalio claim that a huge downfall is imminent. On the other hand, Dalio thinks this weird market condition is entirely man-made. So what now? As I told you in the beginning, be attentive and stay tuned until the end of the video. As a macro investor, Dalio monitors markets, geopolitics, and the economy. He asserts that three events occurred in our lives that have never happened before based on his own historical studies. These are the extensive creation of debt, money issued by authorities and central banks, the kind of internal conflict the U.S. is currently facing over tax policy and differing beliefs, the altered nature of the world order, and the unprecedented competition that China and Russia now face with the United States. History teaches us that depressions are primarily caused by debt and liquidity crisis, which are resolved in one way or another by easing a monetary policy that evolves through time. Money's value might not endure forever or it might depreciate, but in the end they always ease and you will experience that type of reflation movement and shift. Therefore, the ceiling on the easing power of central banks is not lowered by hitting zero interest rates. It has always occurred in the same manner, and if you look at the history, you can see that it lends itself to some sorts of assets. According to Dalio, the incredible money creation that has occurred since 2020 first provided credit and appeared to be a positive thing, but in the end led to inflation since there was too much money chasing a fixed number of commodities. The rising prices follow a rise in the amount of money in circulation. The government budget deficit, money printing, and the greater Federal Reserve balance sheet all contributed to the high inflation rate that is presently 8.3% or 12% if core inflation is taken into consideration. We all know more or less that inflation happens when the amount of money being created exceeds the number of products and services that are readily available, regardless of whether there are bottlenecks in the supply chain. As a result, a currency's buying power is diminished. Because individuals can accept the impacts of inflation on prices and their capacity to spend money more readily than taxes, governments today choose to employ inflation as a policy instead of taxes. Inflation functions as a tax by decreasing the value of savings accounts, bond holdings, and wages. In terms of investments, if the S&P 500 is down 20% year to date and inflation is up 8%, your portfolio is actually down 28%. By inducing inflation, lowering the quantity of capital available for lending, and increasing the cost of new debt, the Federal Reserve's present monetary policy, which boosts interest rates while restricting the amount of money in circulation, is exerting double pressure on the markets. When people realize that retaining cash is a losing proposition owing to falling purchasing power, they may use their money to acquire items that have worth such as real estate and investments. This may lead to inflation that keeps increasing. To prepare for growing inflation in the 1970s and early 1980s, many went to extreme lengths and the Federal Reserve also unduly increased interest rates. Both measures caused inflation to finally stop, which was then stopped by an overreaction. According to Dalio, the prior inflationary cycle is being repeated in the present. How China settles its differences with the United States, with whom it now competes on numerous fronts, including economic commerce and military force, will decide the future trajectory of global power dynamics. On the other hand, nations all across the world are being pushed to take sides in the situation in Ukraine. These relationships will help to shape the plan of the future. You are making a risky investment if you think that cash is not a secure investment and that stocks and bonds are not what they once were. The concept of a wealth store should be taken into consideration rather than only concentrating on stock returns. Balance must be approached differently. All of the issues that Dalio brings out are not often taken into account. They do not represent the common investing experience of the last few years. To comprehend the historical lessons and even what is most likely to occur, one must go back in time and research prior periods that were comparable to the present. And when we did so during the past 500 years, it became obvious that we had no notion when the stock of wealth and the value of money would diminish. If an easy monetary policy were to take place at that time, the diversified portfolio would resemble a reflation portfolio. According to Dalio, the only thing we can rely on is that the Federal Reserve and other central banks will not let an implosion happen without printing a sizable quantity of money. If you choose to purchase a 10-year bond, you are aware of the yield you will get. The anticipated returns for all asset classes, including private equity, venture capital, etc., are quite low, as you will see when you compute the expected returns for other asset classes. This implies that they would all do very poorly if you merely held them for the following 10 years. Additionally, we are aware that diverse asset classes are impacted by monetary policy. We are aware that some of the past actions, such as lowering interest rates and taking other measures to permit an increase in asset values, may not occur in the future, but that is the way the situation is. You may ask how to handle it from an investing standpoint. Actually, diversification is essential now more than ever, 
even if it underperforms since there must be a balance. So, are you more interested in asset class performance or a well-balanced portfolio of assets? Consider this Dalio theory. If you want to invest in stocks, bonds, or both, you should choose a 60-40 to 40 stock slash bond combination. He considers diversity to be the most important first step. He meant to spread among asset classes, countries, and currencies when he said, diversify. He believes that the only thing we can be certain of is that we do not know very much about the future and that it is difficult to anticipate what will happen. Since markets are relatively good at drawing such comparisons, we must thus exercise humility and recognize that nothing is necessarily better than anything else. We still feel that achievements should be as dependable and risk-free as possible even if we are aware that some assets offer higher diversity than others. Since both premiums and excess returns are expected to decline in the future, it is still beneficial to maintain a broad portfolio. Even though the surplus yield will be lower, it will still be more stable because of the components combined low yields, which will increase the excess yield. As history has demonstrated, focusing on a single asset class, country, or other entity is perilous, and it is risky at this time. Because of this, when we look at it, we see reflation. Extremely productive people will come from countries with the greatest educational systems. Much of a nation's success may be gauged by the level of education in that nation. Those nations with a strong rule of law that uphold law and order will thrive over time as they draw investment and immigration, in contrast to those with significant crime and corruption concerns. A country's growth rate and its degree of corruption have a negative 52% association over the next 10 years. Russia is the country with the most commodity wealth, but it is also one of the most corrupt, which lowers its output. Stagflation or inflation amid a recession has a 33% probability of occurring in 2023, according to Ray Dalio. Dalio believes that the United States will see civil war within the next few years as individuals select sides and even relocate to states that share their political ideologies. There must be another way to win, according to Dalio, who thinks there is a larger than 33% chance that the situation in Ukraine could turn into World War a time lie if Russia loses. Therefore, Dalio strongly advises diversifying your assets across equities, real estate, gold, and businesses to guard against inflation and stagflation. So, as you saw, Dalio thinks diversification of portfolio is the key. But do you agree with Mr. Ray Dalio? What do you think about his suggestion? If you have anything in mind that is contradictory to Mr. Dalio, don't be shy. Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. Let's have a chat and figure out what will be the best for all of us. Well, this brings us to the end of today's video. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. And for more such informative videos, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, peace.